Hey, how's it going everyone? It's Lee Halliday. And in the last video we did, we took a look at um, basically the different life cycle events of the uh, use effect hook. And um, during the testing process, we ran into some issues where what happens if the, uh, in this case, the fetcher component unmounts before the Axios Ajax call finished. And what was happening was it was calling our set data um, the set state basically using hooks after the component had unmounted and that was causing some errors because you're not supposed to update the state of a component that's no longer mounted. So what we did to basically solve this error was we introduced a local variable. So we'll initialize it to true. We'll run all of our uh, code that goes and fetches some data from a URL and um, we'll set up two things. The first is that when we get a response back, we will only um, set the data if it's still mounted. So how do we know when it's not mounted? Well, with effect, uh, with the use effect hook, the function that you pass in, so this guy here, allows you to return another function to it that will be run um, sort of any time the effect has to uh, it's basically not valid anymore. So maybe the component unmounts, or maybe uh, in this case, it's uh, it's being run on the URL. So maybe this changes, so it will run the unmounting code of the previous effect so that it can run uh, the top half of the, the new effect it's going to run. But basically, in this function we return, we expect that this will be uh, sort of toggled over to false so that if this code happens to run after it's already been cleaned up, uh, it won't try to set the data because uh, this will no longer be set to true. And this solved the issue, but I was thinking about it and doesn't it sort of make more sense instead of waiting for a response we're never going to use anyways? What if we could just tell Axios, you know what, don't worry about the request you started, cancel it because we, we don't want the response anymore. So that's the, the video we're going to look at today. We're going to basically convert this fetch your code into be code that can actually cancel the uh, Axios call when the use effect hook, um, when it's cleanup method gets called. So the first thing we'll do is, why don't we just copy this and do a new version of it and we'll call it fetcher cancel.js. So right now it will just be the same, but we'll come back here and we'll uh, import it. And this, uh, this app here, it basically just, it's like a little demo of all these different ways to use hooks. Um, I'll link to the source code if you want to take a look, and I've got an article on the way. Um, but for now, we're just worrying about this fetcher cancel. So we'll come down here and we'll start to use it. So fetcher cancel, and it takes in a URL. So I've got this one on a two second delay so that we can um, have it be a slow request so that we can actually trigger the unmounting and make sure that it's working correctly. So if I come back and refresh, it's the second one here. So it's loading for two seconds. And then finally it finishes here. So we've got our data. But what I want to do is basically trigger this so that it unmounts before the two second delay is up so that we can test our code to make sure that it's, it's handling correctly. So what I'll do for that is I will actually set up a new state and we'll just call it mounted and set mounted. And we'll set this to true at the beginning. And then we'll just uh, only run this code here if it's still mounted. So we can say if mounted and and, um, so we'll use like the fragment shortcut and we'll just pop all of this code inside of there. Okay, so if this is true, then we can do this. So right now it should still be on the screen because I never set uh, mounted to false. So we need to basically trigger that and set it up. And I'm gonna use another effect to do that. So use effect. And we'll come in here and we'll say use effect pass it the arrow function, and we'll do uh, empty brackets, which means we only want this code to run once. So inside of our effect, what we'll actually use is a set timeout, which takes an arrow function, and we can have this run after, say, half a second. 
And in half a second, what we want to do is set mounted to false. Okay, so if this runs, you can see that in shows up for half a second, then it disappears. And that's because we're unmounting the component by triggering this to false, which will not render the fetch or cancel, which basically means that it's going to be kicked out and unmounted. So we can come here and we can just make sure that it's working correctly. So unmounting there and um, console.log got response here. So this code should be in the console before this code because this happens after the Axios call. Okay, so it says unmounting and then um, finally got response. So it unmounted way before it got the response, but it doesn't matter because we are handling it with this variable here. So let's now switch this out to use an Axios uh, cancel. And the way you do that is we're going to start off by changing this variable to one called source. So Axios comes with something called a cancel token. And we can ask the cancel token for a source. And this is going to be used, basically, imagine you had five requests going. It's, it allows you to differentiate one request from another. Um, so that you could you can actually reuse the source across many requests, or you can have each request have its own source, so you can cancel them together or individually, it's up to you. And once you've got this source, what you do is you can pass another object here to Axios, and you pass something called the cancel token. So source has this token, so we'll pass that in. Okay? So, We've got our cancel token, Axios is aware of it. We need to down here now in our cleanup function, instead of uh, toggling this variable over to false, what we can do is we can tell the source that we set up here that we want to cancel it like that. So what this will do is basically notify this Axios request that is lined up with the same uh, source token that, hey, I want to cancel this. And what happens is it this actually raises, uh, throws an exception or an error. So we have to wrap this request with a try. And we need to catch the error that might get thrown. So I'm actually going to move uh, this code up into the try. Okay. So we're going to try all of this code here. And what are we trying? Well, we no longer need to check if there's a mounted variable because it doesn't exist. But we're going to try to run this code. So do the request, wait for the response. And when we get the response, um, log to the console and then call set data. But what's going to happen is if it gets canceled, it will raise an exception, which means it will get caught down here. And let's just actually see what's happening now. So I've refreshed it and nothing happens because I caught it but I didn't do anything so let me just rethrow the error okay so see here's the error that was thrown um, well I caught it then I like rethrew it on to whoever wants to catch it um, so you may have something higher up above in your component tree that catches it um, but we want to basically differentiate between a real error, like a 500 request from the API, and our like sort of fake error that is caught, which was triggered due to this canceling. So you can do that by adding an if statement here. And Axios gives you a function you can call is cancel, and you pass it the error. And um, what that allows us to do is we can put an else here, so. If the error that was caught is a cancel, well, we can just say something like um, caught cancel. Otherwise, rethrow the error because this is not something we're expected, and we'll let whoever wants to uh, catch it deal with it. So, in the console right now, what we should see is the first thing that will happen is the unmounting, which happens here. 
which triggers an exception in our Axios request, which will get caught here. And because we're checking whether the error that we caught is an Axios cancel, it will log that to the console. So we should actually never see this got response one because it's basically going to go from unmounting to caught cancel. So if I refresh, we've got unmounting and then right away caught cancel. And we never um, see an error because we're handling everything good um, when it gets unmounted. What I actually haven't checked is does it actually cancel the call? And it does, which is sweet. Go back to network here. So this is the one that we canceled. So it's actually able to cancel the actual HTTP request at 508 milliseconds. So we had done it back here in app at 500 milliseconds. We basically triggered um, toggling this over to false, which would unmount the component. So looks like it take, took about eight milliseconds to set the state re render the app component um, because it's not rendering this anymore, figure out that it needs to unmount, which calls this code, which cancels it, which gets caught up here, and then we log the console. So all of that stuff happened in about eight milliseconds, it looks like. If I run it again, it took seven milliseconds, so it's pretty consistent there. So that is how you both A, cancel an Axios request that's sort of in the process of uh, resolving and how you can tie that into the use effect hook. So that if the effect that this um, asynchronous code is running in needs to clean up and unmount itself before it actually finishes, well, we can just straight up cancel the request, catch it and clean up anything that we need to and not have any errors thrown. So that's the video for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Again, I'll share the, uh, the source code link um, in the video description below. Have a good day. Thanks. Bye.